humans reproduce sexually with what we call internal fertilization. This means that the sperm meet the egg inside the female's body. Therefore, the male anatomy is adapted to produce the sperm and deposit it in the female. And the female anatomy is adapted to receive the sperm and to grow the baby. So you do need to know about the different uh, anatomy of the male and the female and learn about the structures and the functions involved. So let's start off with the female. The first structure to look at is the vagina. The vagina is used for sexual intercourse. The sperm are deposited there. The cervix is at the sort of neck of the vagina, the top of the vagina there, and it uh, separates the womb, the uterus, from the vagina. And this, it is a ring of muscle which holds the baby in the uterus um, during pregnancy. The uterus, as I've already mentioned, is the womb, it's where the baby develops and it has a lining called the endometrium which is full of blood vessels and it's where the initial uh, embryo implants for the baby to grow and where the placenta forms. The ovaries secrete ova, secrete the eggs, um, one every month and it, they also secrete certain sex hormones like estrogen and progesterone. The fallopian tube is where the egg travels down to uh, get down to the uterus, uh, so it connects the ovary to the uterus, and fertilization actually occurs in the fallopian tube. The sperm will swim all their way up the vagina, through the cervix, through the uterus, into the fallopian tube to meet the egg. The female also has a urethral opening in front of the vagina and the anus behind the vagina. So that covers the female anatomy. Looking at the male anatomy, you've got the testes, which is where sperm are produced. You've got the scrotum, which holds the testes outside of the body, which actually keeps them a little bit cooler for sperm production, the ideal temperature for sperm to be produced. The sperm duct, or the vas deferens, is the tube that then carries the sperm up and out of the testes and round um, during uh, ejaculation to then go out uh, of the penis. The glands, the prostate and the seminal vesicles, are things that produce the semen. Um, the semen is added to the sperm. The semen contains everything that the sperm need for their journey, really. It's full of energy, full of sugar, um, for lots of respiration, and it also is alkali um, to protect the sperm against the acidic uh, nature inside the female reproductive system. Looking at the penis in more detail, you've got the urethra, which is the tube that comes out of the penis and the urethra has two functions because um, urine will come out of the urethra um, via the, from the bladder but also the uh, semen will come out of the urethra during ejaculation and sexual intercourse. So, so let's look at the journey of the sperm in a bit more detail. The sperm are first produced in the testes and they pr are produced all the time once the male has started puberty. They mix with this liquid produced, uh, secreted from the glands called semen and then the sperm get ejaculated into the vagina during sexual intercourse. And they swim then through the cervix and into the uterus, and then they swim all the way up the fallopian tube where they will hopefully meet an egg. This takes about 10 hours of constant swimming and, and absolutely millions of sperm will die along the, the way. And only one sperm will actually reach the egg or get into the egg and be able to fertilize that egg. And as it does, it will lose its tail. And those two nuclei then fuse and they form the zygote, that first cell that we all started life as, a combination of a sperm from our father and an egg from our mother. And that embryo then will travel, that zygote develops into an embryo, which then travels back down into the uterus where it implants into the endometrium, the lining of the uterus, and that's where the baby will develop. Once an embryo is implanted, the placenta will develop, and the placenta provides oxygen and nutrients to the growing embryo, and it also removes all the waste, and it's connected to the fetus via the umbilical cord. The placenta also secretes some really important female hormones that keep the pregnancy going. So the placenta has some really important roles. During pregnancy, the amnion, or the amniotic sac, encloses the whole developing embryo, and it secretes amniotic fluid, which protects the baby uh, um, and helps it to develop as the baby can float in this fluid, um, essentially sort of weightless and develop nicely inside there. So we've got the amnion and the amniotic fluid. Now, during teenage years, boys and girls become sexually mature. This is controlled by the sex hormones, testosterone in males and estrogen in females. 
the sex cells start being produced or released if you're a girl at that age once your secondary sexual characteristics develop so you're born with your primary sexual characteristics either you're a boy or a girl and you have those basic sexual organs but they're not activated they're not really working until you hit puberty now in girls that can be aged between sort of 11 and 14 and it's usually a little later in boys between 13 and, and maybe up to 16. Secondary sexual characteristics then, well, in boys and girls, underarm hair will start to develop, pubic hair will grow. In females, the breasts will develop, ready for feeding of baby. Uh, the hips will widen, ready for childbirth. And most importantly, the actual menstrual cycle will begin, the monthly cycle of periods where eggs are released in order to be able to get pregnant, that will start at puberty. In males, facial hair grows, the voice breaks, you'll get a more muscular body and the uh, genitals will develop and sperm will be start being produced.